Next up on the Mutual Audio Network, fiction from our future. The following audio drama is rated G for general audiences. It was no small decision of mine to leave the Alvin Rounds. That is to say, no single small decision. It was actually a grand number of small decisions that led up to it. The final straw, as the saying goes, was the decision of the family matriarch to opt for war. Now, I'm not wholly opposed to war. I think it is necessary sometimes when greater evils must be checked through arms. But not for pride. And that's when I decided I was no longer Uan Taruteka, my mother's daughter. If my father was also elvish, it would have been harder to leave the family. Though my mother displayed a great tantrum upon my announcement of my intention to leave, it was more a matter of control and power than any sentimentality she may have afforded me. I was her thirty-eighth daughter over the span of a thousand and more years, and not of great consequence to her. And so in truth, I think it was more a relief on her part when I finally bid my farewells and left in self-exile from the elven realms. I had no illusions of finding my human father. Elves are a long-lived race, and he was quite dead and even possibly forgotten among his own. The wake of the human race burns quickly so. I had one desire before leaving the realms of the elven people that I had known for four centuries, and that was to visit the Maelstrom before turning away forever. The Maelstrom is just outside the elven realms, but it borders on our southern end and is remote enough that human or any other settlements do not encroach upon it. It is due north from the coastal free states that Seneschal is familiar, and it is considered an evil place among the humans. To the elves, it is more a force of nature to respect and revere than a place to fear. We do not claim it, but we do not avoid it or shun it. It is there. So I arrived and sat on a rise overlooking the maelstrom, looking down into its torrent and chaos. You know when you get that frightening urge to just jump off a cliff or cast yourself into waves crashing on the rocks? That's what I felt when looking down at this gigantic whirlpool. This tugging, this excitement, imagining what it would be like to throw myself into it all. It frightened me, I tell you, that I would have such an urge. And it grew within me the more I sat there while the wind whirled around and I could feel a light spray come from this torrent of water and wind. I finally pacified myself by grabbing up some small pebbles and began tossing them one by one into swirling waters. I imagined what the stones sinking down experienced and it relieved me somewhat from imagining what I would go through if I threw myself bodily into chaos. It's beautiful, isn't it? Came a female voice from behind me. I didn't wonder I hadn't heard her approach from behind with the roar of the waters and wind, and I could tell that she had to raise her voice to speak over the chaos. Such an unbridled force, unleashed. It's senseless, I said. Pure chaos. Where you see chaos, I see order. Order in that. The winds blow and change, the swirling waters appear and dissipate. In a smaller view, it doesn't seem to have any sense to it. But when you look at it from a distance, there is a beauty within the violence. The waters crash down in waterfalls from the upper hills and mix in with the glow that broils up from beneath. The currents dance with each other with great force. Great currents of water are sucked down into the underground while others drain like a siphon of the lower end. There, the waters crash into a great falls which then settles down into a river that trails to the sea. All the while, the wind lashes around in great torrents, riding the whirlpools and creating waves that crash against the rocks. And yet, throughout all of this, it all stays contained within the caldera, not breaching it. The winds do not spill out and torment the lands around. The earth is at once thrown up into its surrounding peaks, and yet plunges down so low that it calls up the water from beneath the surface. The earth gives up its water from below, and then reclaims it as well, so that the reservoir below is replenished. When you are in the midst of it, it all seems to be nothing but confusion, and violence, and unbridled fury. When you are at a distance, you can see the patterns and the balance of it all. So it is all part of perspective, what you perceive, even if its nature remains the same from differing viewpoints. You perceive. You understand. The same goes for you and your mother's perspective. She has a view of a thousand years and more to give. You with the scant four centuries may not have the perspective of her generation's past. I began to object, but she continued. But what you do is right for you. What your mother does is right for her. 
Neither of you are wrong, for you are acting from your own perspectives. How can we do opposite actions within the same situation and both be right? She has her journey, and you have yours. You have been living under the assumption that her journey is yours also. Mine is to make my life my own, away from my mother's influence. My journey no longer consists of doing things of which she approves. That is the only way you will rise above her and become greater than her. But that is not my intent to become greater than her. Not your intent, but is your potential. And it's about time, too. The world awaits you. The world awaits me for what? I turned around to face her, but there was no one there. Not only was there no one about, but given my vantage point, there was no possible way for her to steal away and be gone. I could see her miles around in all directions. It had been like a dream where, while we talked, I knew this was the Queen Matriarch. But instead of acknowledging this and turning and bowing and giving fealty, all the things that would be expected, I continued to converse as if it were a lunchtime discussion over herbal tea and berries. It was only after she had departed and her presence gone that it entered into my conscious mind that I had been visited by the Queen of all our people. I sat there thinking on these things while the maelstrom swirled before me, and its violence seemed now familiar to me, a calming for me. Knowing that even within the torrent of the elements, waves crashing on rock, deadly swirls of water and harsh winds, there was order, if you were not in the midst of it all. Within my home, even my realm, there was conflict. A division of choices of how to approach or confront it all. My mother and the head of our extended family had chosen warfare against diplomacy for however that suited her purpose and her perspective. I did not agree with this from my perspective and so my choices were to remove myself from her influence to better discover myself. I was sitting at the maelstrom doubting my choice, wondering if breaking with my mother's will was the correct one and what would be the consequence of my choice. It would lose the security of the family, its structure, and my established role within it, but I would gain the freedom to walk my path without my mother's will influencing or dominating it. I had doubts, I had fears, I was questioning my choices. For some reason, I was drawn here to contemplate these things before I plunged into the maelstrom of my own future. I felt like a small pebble tossed into the raging forces that would envelop it and it would disappear. I feared I would disappear into the uncertainty of my future. Now I was no longer afraid. The Queen of All Elves had deigned to visit me, and we talked as if I'd known her all my days. Maybe I have. Maybe I still do. Even though my mother had expressed her disapproval of my choices, perhaps she was afeard that I would take my potential and outshine her. Perhaps her fear was her motivation for her anger and resentment of my self-imposed exile. No matter, I do not compare myself to her when I measure what I do with my days. Only to make all of the best of potentials with who I am and what I have been given. And so I set out into the world of humans and human kin, a maelstrom in itself of conflict, wars, intrigue, struggling, survival, danger, and death. A lot of death. But maybe I can be a pebble here, and find within it all peace and contentment, and my own journey. You have been listening to Fireside Stories from the Dungeons & Damsel series. Voice talent for the character Lala Fee was performed by Aaron Summonsby. Script by David Ian. Sound engineering by Dino D. Elfwell. Sound design by David Ian. With music by Ron Perovich. Dungeons & Damsels is a medieval sword and sorcery fantasy series produced by Unchained Productions.